first we will uh, discuss what is the word moving uh, as you know the word moving is the process of making an object of a structure water resistant uh, as we know we apply the word moving in the bathrooms and the room terrace areas and swimming pools and water tank and sumps basement level foundation and kitchen there are different types of uh, waterproofing materials that can be applied in the different location we will discuss why that kind of why we are selecting different kind of material for the different areas uh, and uh, we have to understand the difference between the waterproofing and damp proofing uh, i think there's a uh, bit different between the uh, these terms uh, water proofing is the treatment of the surface to prevent the passage of liquid water in the present of hydrostatic pressure it mean uh, in the first figure you can see uh, in the swimming pool swimming pool and the second figure is the bathroom and next we will discuss the roof terrace it mean that in the swimming pool always water is retaining in the structure so uh, surface is always uh, present of hydrostatic pressure so the type of application what we been maintained we have to select considering that uh, hydrostatic pressure that uh, kind of thing we will tell the as a waterproofing and the damp proofing means the treatment of a surface to retard the absorption of moisture in the absence of hydrostatic pressure if we consider the uh, substructures uh, and uh, below the water table uh, it means that there is no in hydrostatic pressure in that uh, structures it means that in the first figure you can see the uh, dpc in the uh, block wall when we are constructing the house we apply the dpc normally uh, we apply the dpc uh, about the 150 from the existing ground floor because the moisture is uh, coming through the uh, block wall due to the capillary actions and so many issues then uh, we have to prevent the water uh, penetrate for the through the walls for the upper floors so that's why we have applied uh, normally we are using the polythene and the uh, uh, membrane application ta uh, etc we have applied in the buildings and the uh, second figure you will see uh, the the polythene we have normally use the polythene under the base that as a moisture barrier that uh, type of uh, prevention we are calling as a damp proofing then uh, then we will discuss why water proofing is essential in this figure you can see the all the possible ways that the water can come through the structure internal structures first uh, we will discuss uh, the honeycombs there are a type of honeycombs to the honeycombs uh, what is coming from the to, uh, to the building and for the foundation cracks and the foam ties foam ties means uh, this is the type of peak or if someone is not experienced in this kind of thing see the foam tie means the uh, tie fix on the peak on basically the water is coming through the uh, peak on red bar <laughs> that uh, the, and the sewer pipeline if the pipes are uh, not correctly fixed to the wall and if the pipe collars are not properly fixed the water and coming through these structures and the uh, from window wells and the top of walls and the exterior flooding the flooding is coming water is coming inside the building and the mortar joints and the pipe penetration and the most important things are flow cracks we have to avoid uh, and the flow drain and we have to avoid uh, all the possible ways uh, that can be water come into the structure that's why we uh, if we know the possible ways we can apply the correct cementitious application for the correct location and uh, this is the section of the structure uh, we will see uh, this is the substructure section and you can see uh, there are different kind of possible ways that water come into the, inside the building and this is the positive side and this is the negative side you will see the water is going to the uh, base wall joint this is the uh, first way of water coming through the structure so we have to avoid this uh, path we have to obstruct this path then uh, 
another thing is the water is coming through the structural pores and the cracks there are some uh, minor pores within the structure concrete structure and as well as the crack then if the water is coming contact with the surface water is uh, surging a path to flow if we uh, find a path the water is coming to that path you will see this is the second way of uh, water uh, coming to the structure and the third one is the, if the wall and the ground is contact directly the the whole structure the water due to the hydrostatic pressure and the moisture the due to the voids in the structure water is coming so so we have to avoid we have to protect this surface directly contact with the structure and we have to avoid uh, this path and we have to seal the this crack if we know the possible ways we can apply the correct uh, method for the water uh, for the uh, seal the wall the wall based joint we normally use the uh, water bar i will first discuss the theory part then i will uh, move into the practical uh, Session. What we have done in the uh, side. Uh, this is the uh, kind of theory. Uh, and the, for the seal, the base for joint, we apply the mild steel water bar, 200 millimeter water bar. And first, we cast the base. This base. And uh, 100 millimeter is inside the base. This area should be 100 millimeter. And this, this this height is 100 millimeters. Then, uh, what happens is when the wall also construct, the water path is increased. When the water is moving here, the, the water cannot go easily, uh, as previously uh, mentioned in the picture. We obstruct with the using water bar, and we increase the water path like here. It's a, like a mountain if we are zooming in this structure it's like the mountain so water is not trying to uh, move in the hardest path the water is also like us we, we are not also moving in the hardest path no we always try to move the easiest way that's the main theory we are applying the water bar increase the water path so if the increase the water path water is sealed here not coming uh, then uh, we have to have Void the cracks, seals, seal the cracks and voids in the structure. Uh, so that kind of things. Uh, sometimes uh, we may not see the cracks uh, within the structure. It's not easily visible for the outside. That's why we are applying the inner side waterproofing and the outer side waterproofing. We apply the inner side waterproofing here, and we apply the outside waterproofing outside. What we mean the positive surface what we mean. So if the both surfaces are prevent from uh, direct contaminate uh, contacts, water there is no way to come into the structure. Uh, so we we have to know the exact possible ways that water come into the structure. That's what I want to highlight. Uh, this is the section of the uh, concrete structure. As you know, how water can penetrate through the concrete structure. Basically, uh, there are different kind of ways that water coming through. This is the zoom structure. And first one is the honeycomb, the large voids. As you know, uh, uh, honeycomb is the main reason uh, that can uh, leak the structure. Uh, there are two types of honeycombs. Uh, it, uh, where we can easily see and we cannot see in the, inside the structure the honeycombs inside the structure we cannot see if we if we want to uh, observe the honeycombs in the honeycombs or non-concrete pockets in the structure we have to use the advanced techniques like uh, ultrasonic pulse velocity those kind of things but in the sites we are not practicing uh, due to several issues uh, the thing is that we avoid the uh, surface is contact with the external and internal surfaces. As you know, the uh, honeycomb uh, can cause uh, uh, cause the due to several reasons: due to the improper uh, vibration and due to the low slump, 
and if the slump is higher, grout uh, can leak through the formwork and uh, the co- uh, less covering issues for the rainforest. Those are the causes for the honey bombs. And uh, this is the second method: uh, the cracks. The, we have to seal the cracks. If the structure, if we are inspecting the surface, if we observe the crack in the surface uh, larger than 0.5 millimeter, we have to rectify that before applying the waterproofing. And to the joints, and uh, other things are due to capillary actions and the hydrostatic pressure. As I mentioned earlier, if a non-concrete area is within the structure and the surface is, if this front surface is uh, consists with uh, grout due to the hyd- hydrostatic pressure, this outer surface is damaged. This surface is damaged due to the hydrostatic pressure. Then water flowing this path to then reach the uh, non-concrete area in the structure. Then he, the water is uh, searching for another easy path, easy path where he can move. Yeah, easy path. If there is no any path, the water is sealed, no leakage. We, we cannot see the uh, damp patches from the uh, other side. If we observe some uh, loose path, it means the honeycomb or non path or crack or void, he definitely move to this structure to the and the water is come out from these areas. So this is the micro level structure, micro level thing that we have to identify. As engineers, uh, we also know what are the possible ways that the water can come uh, to this structure. Then we can uh, use the uh, several techniques, then we can give the solutions for the uh, areas. Uh, up to now, we have discussed the why, what is the waterproofing and why we are doing the waterproofing. Then we will discuss where to apply the waterproofing. Uh, in this, uh, normally there are uh, different type of areas between the positive side, negative side, blind side, interior and exterior. The positive, negative, blind side waterproofing basically uh, we are discussing uh, in the substructures and the interior and exterior applications uh, we are discussing in the superstructure. And the positive side waterproofing is the same side of the structure as the source of the water. In this figure you see this is the structure if the water pressure is from this way we are applying the coating here we avoid the contact uh, at the first stage it means uh, when we are designing uh, we have to design to stop the water before it has a chance to enter the structure and cause the structural damage this is the first step we are using the waterproofing it's the typically most effective solution in this figure, you also see that this is the kind of positive side road moving. This is the uh, soil and this is the structure and the water is coming to this layer, this way for the structure. So we have to rectify, uh, apply water moving at the first stage. <laughs> the neg- uh, negative side water moving is the <laughs> interior side opposite the water pressure uh, side of the structure. It means that this figure you can see if the water pressure is coming this way, <coughs> this, this is the negative side, the opposite the water pressure side of the structure. Normally we are practicing this in the lift well, but uh, the best, uh, best practice is to we have to apply the water pumping in the positive side also before if something happens. If a water leaking, uh, if we are not applying the positive side water pumping, only negative side, if some leakage, if the poor workmanship, if the leakage is coming here, we cannot do. We have to only do the, uh, we have to do the rectification in the same side. That, uh, that's very hard to rectify. That's why we are using when the substructures, we use uh, both positive side and negative side. And the blind side waterproofing is the a kind of uh, positive side waterproofing. In this figure, you can see the blind side board moving. Uh, it's uh, typically inaccessible once the structure is completed. Once the structure is completed, we can't access that area, the waterproofed area. That's why we have to do the waterproofing correctly with the best practice. 
otherwise if the rectification is coming we have to rectify it in the negative side we cannot access this area 